talk to you guys about um, something I'm excited about. Um, one of the things that I notice is there's always complaints about money, not having enough money, not making enough money, uh, money, money, money. And what I have learned over the course of my life is, first of all, the psychology of money is so underrated. How people think about money has so much to do with how they handle money, how they pursue money, the position in their life that they give money, how they manage money, and everything in between. Um, and I find that people who have poor thinking habits as it concerns money tend to perpetuate those poor thoughts, those poor beliefs, those poor paradigms throughout generations. So if you have poor thinking habits, then you have poor spending habits, then you have poor management habits and you have a, 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 a skewed view of investing in the stock market and, and passive income and, and, and all of those things that are so important in building a wealth portfolio that you only see one thing. Most people only understand money through cash or currency. They don't understand money through all the other forms that it shows itself. Money isn't simply currency. Money is the, the value of anything exchanged for something else of value. And you have to understand that money is not the end game. Money is a tool. It is the medium through which values are exchanged. And if you don't understand that, you get caught up in the money chase. You get caught up in the rat race. You get caught up in a perpetual life of poverty. That's why so many people believe that poverty is their lot in life. No, poverty is not your lot in life. You can produce whatever you desire to produce when you change your thinking. Everything is going to evolve around your thinking. Everything is going to erupt out of your thinking. Whatever you're living right now, it comes from thoughts you thought in the past that, that came from beliefs that led to behaviors that produced results and you're living those results right now. And that happens in every area of life, your relationships, your jobs, your career, um, your health, and your money. And so the idea that there's only so much out there. The idea of lack is another poor thinking habit that comes from a misunderstanding of money. Well, in doing this, and I shared this guy with you guys yesterday, that's why I'm so excited. In doing this, one of the things I realized is if we're gonna change that, we've gotta change it at the origin. And that means that we've gotta stop teaching children through our behaviors predominantly because most homes where poverty is, we're not even talking money. The only time a child in a home that is below the poverty level or right at the poverty level hears about money, it's when someone is telling them they don't have it. You know, wait till I get it. We learn how to wait for money. So we learn that the only time I get money is on those scheduled days where either I get paid or I get some kind of benefit or something else. There's nothing I can do in between those days to create the things that I need for myself because I've been trained and conditioned to wait. So what I decided to do is I decided to give parents a tool, real simple tool to help teach young children. I, I made it for teens, but you can definitely start teaching it to children younger than teens, but teens definitely need to be prepared to handle money before they get in a position where money becomes a necessity and not a, not only, not just a luxury. See, when you're living under your parents' roof, the money you make on your little job is a luxury. You know, you kind of go spend it, you know, at your discretion. Well, once you become an adult and you, you get to a point to where you're trying to live independently, now money becomes a primary element and component to the lifestyle that you live. And so we have to understand that living a certain lifestyle requires a certain uh, level of skill, a certain level of value you bring to the workforce because that's how you earn money, whether you're working for someone else or you're working for yourself. You have to establish a value in a certain industry in a certain market to where whatever it is you provide is worth being paid for. You get paid based on your value. The beautiful thing about it is we live in a culture now in a global society, so to speak, uh, a global, ec global economic society, whereas in you can literally sit up and create a value and function from a third party consultant position uh, in providing services and establish it. You don't need someone to give you a break. You can create your own break. Uh, 
Never has the opportunity been this great to create your own break. But the problem is you got to change how you think about money. You got to change the whole waiting mentality about money. So I decided to create a guide that will fast track your, your, your teenagers to success, not only in finance, but in writing out the life that they desire because they understand money and they know how to leverage money. They know how to make money. They know how to invest money. They, they know how to protect the asset of money and so much more. Uh, this guy is, uh, what, 34, 35 pages tops. Uh, it goes through a number of different uh stages of teaching children about working for money so that they have a value of time, energy, effort, and what it takes to have it so that they don't see it. You know the old saying, uh, our parents told us money don't grow on trees. What they were saying is you, you ask for things as if money isn't a earned or uh, constricted resource in, in, in their instance. What they're saying is even if I have a lot of money, it didn't grow on a tree. Well, I can just go out and pick it. I had to earn it, and you don't appreciate the value of that. So you just ask for it like it's like it's free water. And so you have to teach them the value of that. And one way to do that is giving them a job, making them get a job. You know, they don't have to pay anything, uh, no bills or nothing like that. I'm not with that. I don't believe in pinning a kid down like that. That's not the kid's responsibility. But I think that having money, now they got to go out and buy all that extra stuff they want that they don't need. They have to buy it. And so now... They, they know that when they go out and they want something for $70 and they only make $7 an hour, that means they got to work 10, 10 hours for that. It gives it a value and it makes them understand, maybe I don't need this as much as I thought I did. Or it makes them appreciate what has been spent in the past and get, gain an appreciation of how things will be spent in the future. But in this guide, it is a step-by-step uh, -step process this conversation, see, in, in poor homes, we're not having these conversations. The only, like I said, the only time we talk about money in, 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 in impoverished homes is when we say we don't have it. We keep creating the idea and the thought uh, basis for lack. Lack is an idea that is influenced by behavior and old thought processes. You've got to move out of that and you've got to start looking at this world and this universe. This whole place is a place of abundance. You can create for yourself no matter what's going on, the things you need, the things you desire. You just have to be able to think beyond where you're at right now and find what you need to do in order to, that's, that, that's all a business is. A business is taking a skill set or a gift you have and finding a need or a problem and meeting that need or solving that problem at a way that very few people can. And the better you solve it, the more uniquely you solve it, the more that you can sit up and demand for your services because if they want it, they have to come through you. That's the basics of it. Now, you obviously, you've got to give good service. You've got to good, good, cu give good customer service. You've got to be have good work ethic. You've got to have good uh, ethics in general. But at the bottom line, it's about seeing the gift in you and determining how you serve other people with that gift. And I don't like getting involved in business ideas that's built on want because wants are normally trendy in our culture. So they want it now, they probably won't want it later. And now you're out there trying to do something else. I don't believe in starting a business based off of something I just like and passionate about without understanding the market. So in other words, when I create a, a, a business, a, a course, Anything that I may create from any of my businesses is going to be based on a need that already exists. I don't have to go out and create a market, find a market, convince people it's necessary. I already know the market. I simply have to create the product and present it to a market in a way that they can see the value in it. And then I let everything else take care of itself. Well, that's the making of the money on that end. Of it. But the beauty of money is if you know how to handle money, you start making money make itself. Multiply itself. That's called investing. That's called creating passive income through uh, investments and uh, purchases. Uh, there's uh, deployable assets. There's so many different ways that you can do this. That I talk about in a more advanced course called Seven Steps to Financial Freedom. But this little digital guide is the starting point to prepare kids. I guarantee you, if you haven't invested in understanding money you'll learn something too and it's only ten dollars and deliverable when 
deliverable within 24 hours, depending on when you order it. Obviously, you order it at nine o'clock at night. You're not getting it till the next day, but it's deliverable within 24 hours and you can start teaching it to your kids. You can share it. I don't have a lock on it, so you can share it with family members. But I mean, you know, now it would be nice if you would buy one for each family member, but if you share it, I am not tripping on that either. But what I do want is I want every household to have it, to share it, to use it as a reference, to use it as a starting point, to use it as a building point. I want those of you who are even at a, at a more serious point in life to sign up for that seven steps to financial freedom. Anybody can get there in the right amount of time. Now, obviously, the longer you wait in your life to start taking control of your finances, the more aggressive you've got to be to meet a point because when you're 20, you've got 20 years and you 20 years to me is the magic little magic number in 20 years you can do so much with a conservative investment strategy that will put you in a position where you are set for life in 20 years you can do it in 20 years and everybody's and everybody's going 20 years oh my 20 years see that's the problem we think so much about now that we don't think long term 20 years if you start at 18 at 38, you can retire. Now, I'm not a retire-minded person. I'm not retiring until I stop breathing. I love what I do, and I'm gonna do it as long as I possibly can. But that, that's gotta be a time in my life where my work isn't necessary in order to sustain my lifestyle. That's called being independently wealthy. And then you get to financial freedom. That means not only is my lifestyle sustained, anything extra I wanna do, I can just go do it. That's the levels that you have that you can get to but you've got to start planning and taking action now. You, the chances of hitting the lottery are astronomically high, uh, low, astronomically low. And then what, I, what we know is and what we find is that when you haven't educated yourself in finance, even when you hit the lottery, the chances of actually squandering it all are astronomically high. Why? Because it's not about whether you can get it or not. It's about whether you know what to do with it and how to keep it. That's the big thing. And when you understand money, you're never at a loss. Your wealth isn't in how many zeros are in your bank account. Your wealth is in the knowledge of how to put zeros in the bank account. Because that number inside the bank account, the number of your bank account is going to fluctuate. There are going to be times it's going to be going up and there will be times that will be going down. That's life. Things happen. There may be some times that it's going to hit very close to rock bottom. But that shouldn't upset you if you understand money because you understand money. You know that you'll be able to re uh, reproduce what you've, reprodu what you've produced in the past and get it back to where it needs to be in time. That's the beauty of it. Understanding money changes the stress equation in life because you're never at a point where you're losing it because things aren't going right financially. Why? Because you understand money. You understand at some point it corrects itself. It just does when you know what you're doing and you're not panicking. So uh, the link, the link for uh, ordering this guide will be in the description box or wherever video, wherever you're watching this video at. I'm going to share it on a number of different platforms um, because I want everybody to have an opportunity for it. And like I said, for $10, you're going to get something that can literally change the lives of your kids. Put your kids in a situation where they can do astronomically better, uh, go to astronomical levels and do exceptionally high, more than what you've done, which, which should be your goal. But also, it's going to offer you an opportunity to reevaluate how you're looking at life from a financial perspective and de determine whether you want to make moves and change your situation. And even for those of you who are lower middle class, middle, middle class, and are living comfortably, if you lost your job or your business folded, how long could you survive without being able to produce any income? What mechanisms would you have in place that would still be working for you if you lost your primary source of income? That's the thing. Multiple streams of income that are passive. So, in, in essence, in essence, that's the thing that you've got to be able to look at. Look, I've made it to the office. I got to get in here and get some things done. And then I'm headed to the gym. So I'm about to jump off of here. But I had to talk to you about that. And I'll be talking to you about it for a while. 
uh, because I think that it's an opportunity for anybody who wants to do better to do better. There's always this thing about I can't afford, I can't afford. You can't afford not to. And on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.